Like, I don't need to say I'm excited about this one, Steve. Um, you know, as you mentioned, two undisputed champions, Charlo's undisputed at 154, Canelo at 168. This fight will be at 168. Um, so initially appears like a substantial gap in weight, but I don't expect size to play all that much of a factor here. You know, Charlo's a naturally big guy at junior middleweight as it is. And to be honest, that's not how he's going to win this fight anyway. You know, if he's going to win this fight, he's going to have to win it off his speed. He's going to have to win it off his, you know, lateral movement, his explosiveness as well. You know, attributes that Canelo simply can't match in there. Um, you know, can he pull it off? You know, it's certainly possible given his speed. You know, he definitely has the foot movement. Um, you know, the explosiveness, as I said, to make this fight competitive. But for me, you know, it would require an absolutely pitch perfect performance from him here. And he makes just enough kind of positional errors, uh, gets dragged into too many needless exchanges for me that I just don't see him getting the job done this weekend. You know, we look at the two fighters who've beaten Canelo over the last six or seven years. You know, Triple G, don't care what the official scorecard was in that fight. Triple G clearly beat him. Uh, at least once, and Dimitri Bivol as well. And I was on this show at the start of last year, giving out Bivol to beat Canelo on points of plus 700, largely down to the fact that, like Triple G, Bivol also utilizes that power jab and fights, um, you know, and that creates a ton of issues for Canelo in the ring. You know, we know Canelo likes to walk in under that high guard, you know, bait opponents into throwing on him before he can then counter with that left hook to the body or the right hand over the top. You know, and a power jab simply doesn't allow him to do that. You know, he was constantly having to reset against, you know, both Triple G, especially in that second fight. Um, and again, in that most recent loss to Bivol as well. And that's just not something Charlo um, has the ability to take advantage of here. You know, Charlo does have a decent jab. He certainly showed that in his fight against Jason Rosario. But oftentimes it can be a little lazy. He doesn't retract it quick enough, in my opinion, and potentially even worse from in this one. You know, when he's looking the jab down to the body, he doesn't dip down with it. You know, he doesn't fully make the adjustment into attacking downstairs. Um, instead, looking to fire that jab down diagonally instead while, you know, remaining fairly upright. And that's a recipe for disaster here, in my opinion, against Canelo. You know, Canelo absolutely feasts on fighters who utilize mid-range jabs. That is literally his bread and butter in fights. He waits for you to engage, you know, usually from a, a mistimed jab and then loads up with a heavy counter. So... I believe Jamel Charlo will start fast in this fight. I think his speed and athleticism alone will cause a ton of problems for Canelo's time and early in this one. But I just cannot get past that job issue for Charlo here. The one area you do not want to be caught napping in against Canelo is throwing out a kind of perfunctory job in there. And at some point, I do believe Charlo is going to be made to pay for that. So we hit the plus 700 prop in Canelo's fight against Bivol last year. As I mentioned earlier, we'll look to come right back and replicate a bit of that magic once again. Canelo Alvarez to win in rounds 9 to 12. Back third of the fight is going off at 7 to 1 this weekend. I believe we reach a stage in this one where Canelo will catch him with something big late.